Hi everyone, so time for another video. Um, this video is going to be a relatively quick one, but I just wanted to show everybody uh, quite a useful uh, trick that I've been using for years called Cyber Threat Assessment or CTAP. So basically, uh, if you work with uh, your local distributor or you've got some gates on shelf, um, you can configure them in a way that they can be sent out to a customer site and used to um, record some data uh, and provide fancy reports that um, you can put stuff on the exec team's desk and say, this, this is what our findings are. Um, so next week, I'm actually gonna be out uh, at a customer site for an operational technology audit. Um, I'm going to potentially use a seat up there as well, um, but for this purpose, I'm just going to configure one for my home um, home network just to show you how to do it. So partners have access to uh, the cyber threat assessment portal. That's what you see now. That's ctap.fortinet.com, uh, and inside here you are able to configure uh, new assessments. So if I click new. So there's a variety of different CTAPs available. Um, you've got a next generation firewall CTAP, so that's going to uh, look at what's going on from a, a, an internal network perspective. It's going to try and ap apply some application control policies, web filtering, that kind of thing, IPS, antivirus, try and learn about what's going on in the environment. To be clear, a CTAP isn't going to do anything. It's simply going to... Re learn for reporting purposes. Same for SD1. So it's going to look at uh, what traffic it, what traffic uh, does the appliance see via the logs that it's being sent to it uh, and how and how could that apply in, um, to SD1? Could, could SD1 benefit around that? CTAP for operational technology. Uh, it's going to look for operational technology specific protocols with Modbus. Uh, and CTAP for email. Um, not actually use this one, but I'd like to do a video on this at some point. Um, so as this is a, a, a home network, I'm going to um, next generation firewall. So company name can simply be test. Country is the UK. Postal code. Um, doesn't matter. DOF doesn't matter. Contacts for myself. Uh, email um. so I'm going to be using an ATF to do the CTAP and I'm running, um, so this is the serial number and uh, this is the firmware version that I'm running. Uh, I definitely, definitely recommend that you you do your CTAP on version 7.2 onwards. Some of the legacy devices like 100F support lower versions of firmware, but the, the reports are, are, are not half as good as what you're getting with the, the newer stuff. Specific to operational technology, the minimum is, is this firmware. So I'm going to do it on an internal network. Um, you have two choices. Um, one arm sniffer um, is basically you configure a port mirror um, and you, you you mirror all the traffic. So let's say that's coming, uh, that's facing the LAN on a Cisco switch from the existing firewall. Let's say it's port one. You would mirror that traffic to port eight on the switch and then patch that into the um, well, in our case, the ATF appliance that's going to be doing the, the port mirror. So basically, you're sending a copy of all the data that's being seen between the firewall and the LAN over to port 8. So then the fire, the FortiGate firewall itself gets a copy, so then it can report on it. Um, second option, which is what I'm going to actually implement here, is a transparent pair. Um, so basically, uh, you're, man in the, you're doing a man in the middle. So... Let's say at the moment that you have a firewall, um, it comes out of port one on that firewall and goes into port one on the Cisco switch. You're going to place 
the forty gate firewall in between. So port one on the uh, out of the customer's existing firewall or router or whatever it is will go into port one on the forty gate firewall. Then from the forty gate firewall, port two will go back will go down to the LAN interface um, of the switch. So you, you you're man in the middle essentially. We're going to start it today and we're going to end it on Friday because that's when I need to take the device out. Uh, it's a test and I'm going to enable sandbox. Um, I'll just leave the default addresses here uh, in the UK. Fill it out. So my doors is generate a config file uh, and some steps which I will show you. So yeah, you get this, you get the uh, configuration file, which will download to here and you get a reference sheet. So I've just done this after a customer using an ATF. So it tells you what you need to do. Uh, Unbox the gate, uh, make sure that the serial number matches the assessment. We've just done that. Um, check the firmware version matches, so it must, in our case, match. So I do actually need to upgrade the firmware on my appliance, but I'll do that. Um, I'll do that off video. Uh, then you import the CTAC configuration file. So that's the file down here that is just downloaded. Uh, make sure that you um, then log back into the appliance using the the new new credential, so it does change the password. Just to be clear. Um, then um, what you do is you connect one one to the internal network, so they have to speak out to the in internet because it needs to send the logs to the CTAP um, assessment program, which is basically a forty analyzer. Um, and then to do the man in the middle, so um, the first cable would go into port one, the second cable would go into port two, uh, leave it for a couple of days in my case, and then we will see what uh, information it has. Okay, so what I've done now is I've um, upgraded the firmware to uh, 725 on the uh, ATF. I've connected it up to my internal network, and you can see it's responding on 1088. 8844. So I browse over select address now. Log in. So I've logged into the new ATF appliance. As you can see, it's now running 725, which is required for a CTAP. So what we need to do now is we need to import the CTAP configuration file, which we uh, was able to download via the CTAP portal before. So to do that, you just go to admin, configuration, restore. Uh, I've got the file stored here, so it's this one. Pop it on there. Yeah, so this is this is the CTAP name. There's no password on it, um, and just fire that into the unit. Um, just I think I said before, um, doing this does change the password. So the, the password um, is is different uh, for when you apply a CTAP config. So um, the new password by default is forty now. Okay, so uh, now that that uh, firmware upgrade is done and the configuration file is taken, we'll just look at what this has actually got configured. So uh, one one's got uh, a laptop configured to it at the moment. One two um, has uh, got a cable into my LAN. It's picked up an address uh, via DHCP, which is what we're accessing the device on. And then as you can see, there's a virtual wire pair, which has got internal one, an internal two maps to it. And you can see that the internal wire uh, policies are simply allow all, any source, any destination, just simply pass it through. But it's got the security profiles associated with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over to my rack um, and I'm going to reroute some cables to essentially man in the middle between my old gate and my LAN switch. So then we're going to start seeing the traffic in log and report forward traffic here. See, we see nothing at the minute, but that's going to change in a second.
So now that in a row in the middle, then internal one and internal two have got the green light next to them. You can see that's there. I should be seeing logs. So the, my Wi-Fi network is, is is what's passing through here, as you can see. Got some Spotify traffic and some bunch of other stuff. So if we go back to the CTAP portal, you can now see that the test we configured has now started to receive some logs. Uh, so yeah, everything is working as it should, really. We uh, simply need to wait a couple of days and um, we tick this log, log ready button and then tick another button to generate the report. And then um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, um, I'll show you the report. I just thought I'd show, if you go to support security events, then click logs and then browse by uh, application control, you can see the device that's doing the man in the middle is started to pick up on all the applications that are running through the appliance. Now, the purpose of this is to simply generate it, send the logs over to 40 Analyzer and then generate a report, which you will see that's exact focused. So um, the partner that I work for uses this tool to place an appliance into uh, a potential customer's environment so we can learn and understand what might be going on in the network. And we have found some quite interesting things, let's say that floating in, around the environment. Okay, so that's been running for 24 hours now. Um, as you can see, it's uh, labeled home test. Um, it's initiated and um, it's re received around just over half a gig. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click into this assessment actions and I'm gonna indicate that the logs are ready and I'm happy. So what happens now is after around 45 minutes an hour, um, I should get an email to say that the report is um, uh, accessible via the portal, um, which I will share with you now. So you will see now that I've done that, that the uh, status has changed to logs ready. Okay, so we can now see that the status has changed to report ready. Uh, I'm unable to um, open the report. These are the findings. So it's about 1,652 IPS hits. Uh, these were th things like uh, Telma, trace route, that kind of thing. Three higher risk application, applications, 127 applications detected, one proxy based application, 14.3 gig yeah, in, in the period. That's pretty cool. You could use that metric for uh, 40 analyzer, actually. Yeah, I'm not surprised by this number at all. So 49.5% of the traffic is, is encrypted by uh, SSL. Yeah, you can see the IPS hits, trace route, ICMP, oversized packet. HTTP, Team Viewer, um, we probably trying to access a, a client's network yesterday actually. Probably need to look at what this what this host is actually. No malware. This is pretty cool. So productivity. <clears throat> Not surprised by this really. 34% Facebook in a in a home network, iCloud, Instagram. That kind of thing. Lots going to uh, Amazon Web Services. I'm not surprised by that either.
Twitch TV and YouTube. Well, I always have Twitch TV on in the background, so I'm not surprised by that. Web applications, Apple Store, Discord, LinkedIn. Uh, website, so this is the this will be as part of the certificate handshake, but um, yeah, it's lots of digi cert, various different active portals. Not surprised that I mean, Google's the home page for most machines here. Utilization report, uh, see if the peak times do actually. Uh, Marry up, so uh, three, four, five. Uh, then this is trying to put the little one down, and then nine and ten. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, it was turned turned off um, uh, earlier this morning, so eight o'clock. So that's why it's there. Surprised that not surprised to not see Spotify up here. To be honest with you. So, yeah, certainly some of them on Facebook, Instagram, that. Sure. Uh, Ireland, well, that's where the, the main European Amazon Web Services based data center is, so not surprised by that. Again, you could use this mod metric for 40 analyzer, it's broken. CPU, well, it was an, it's an ATF and it's just on the LAN environment, so I'm not expecting it to be anything crazy so yeah that's that's the report so what you do now with this report is you uh simply do what i've just done make sure that there's nothing too crazy in there um you document it up and you send it off to the exec team for a customer uh, give them an insight of what's going on um yeah, just to be clear this is a this is a home environment based ctap so you're not going to find anything too crazy but um certainly with lots of large, large organizations that i've worked with um this kind of report is, is very, very useful.